Hi everybody, welcome to part 7 of my beginning Simutrans tutorial. In this tutorial, we are going to be talking about airports and air transport. So, um, departing from the last tutorial, you can see that I have changed the map. I have started a new map in the year 2002. And you can see I've already built um, a bit of infrastructure and kind of got my transport company started. We have, a, we have a rail line, an intercity rail line that connects this city with this city, and that's pretty much it. And then we have some bus lines, which I will probably talk about in a different video. But um, I just want to focus on airports in this video. So what we're going to be doing is connecting this city right here with this city all the way down here. I'm on a pretty big map. So it kind of gives us a good circumstance to build an airport and start like a, an air service. So we're going to be connecting it to Trowvale, which is all good. So um, let's start by building the airport, the actual airport first. When you are building an airport, you want to start off with a flat space because there's a couple components that go into the airport and different airplanes require different runway lengths. So you need to start by building the taxiway. So you can see there's different levels of um, surface for the airport. I just, you know, I don't really know the big differences between them. So I'm just gonna use the, the most expensive one. And I think later in the game, this will then become the only, the only one you can use, I'm not sure. Okay, so kind of hard to decide, so we'll just we'll just start there, and we want to build our aircraft hangar. And you can see that we have this large, very well curated selection of airplanes. There's Boeing 747s, there's, those are the largest ones you can use, there's mid-range, and uh, single aisle, 737, A320, 21s. Then there is also a 787, which comes out later in the game. And I think there's a couple other ones, like an A350. But since this is just going to be a pretty short route, relatively speaking, we don't really need a boat, the, one of the larger planes. So we can just go with it, uh, 737. And you can see that they have like a, set, a couple different varieties. Like there is a 737 with um, 165 low, uh, sorry, third class seats and 12 first class seats. 148 third class seats, 12 first class seats. But then this one has 184 uh, fourth or fourth class seats. So that's what that would be like, you know, an all economy configured airplane like Spirit Airlines or Ryanair. Um, so let's just go with this one just because it has a very high capacity. And all of the seats are the lowest uh, class rating that way. Those are the cheapest, and I think that will attract the most passengers. So I think we will just start off with that one. So we have our airplane. Now we just want to build a little terminal area. So let's just go down here, not too far. We want to give ourselves room to expand in the future. And so then what you need to do is you need to build an apron, which is uh, has a jetway. And that is the first thing that you need to build. That's like the platform. You can't build anything else without it. Then we want to build a terminal building. And you need a control tower. And that's it, pretty much. And then we'll build a connecting road. And then up here. Oh, so let's let's look at our airplane that we selected. OK. So it says that the minimum runway length is 2,780 meters. Okay, so that means we have to build a runway that is more than that. So we'll go over here, 2,780. Let's just make it a cool 3,000 meters. Connect the taxiway. Okay, and that's all you need to do. And so let's go back to our the new city we want to serve. Now this is going to be a little bit different, a little bit tricky because it doesn't look like we have like a lot of flat space here that we can use. Well, maybe I guess we could just put it right there. Sometimes you have to get creative. So what do we say? 3,000 meters. So let's go. 
We'll start back here. There, perfect. And you can see that when you're dragging the runway, it'll show the estimated cost, and then it'll show how far you are, the length of the runway that is being built. <clears throat> so we'll build a little uh, taxiway, little terminal area right here. Terminal building and control tower. And then this one also gets a connecting road. Build a bus stop. <clears throat> and let's really quickly um, go over the bus um, mechanics and how those work. So when you start in, if you start around the year 1970, that is when personal automotive transport becomes very popular. And what will happen is the roads will become like clogged with cars. And so what you want to do to make it like somewhat realistic and playable is you go to display to the end vehicle display settings and you and it says here traffic density by default I think it starts at 11 and you want to bring it down to like 7 because at 11 like the roads will be just clogged and like they won't traffic can't even move it's ridiculous <clears throat> which is kind of a it makes it challenging so if you like the challenge of that it's perfect because it makes it so like buses are like almost unusable and you have to find a different method of transport but in reality you know there is lots of traffic but it's not usually like that where it's just gridlock standstill can't do anything so i like to lower it a little bit makes it so there's traffic bus still has to wait a little bit sometimes but it's not unusable so there's our bus depot First bus stop, we'll just make it across city line. We want to hit all as many of the big attractions as we can. So there's that. I'll just kind of make a weird little meandering line. I'm using the bus stop with shelter, but I would recommend that you use the basic bus stop when you start because it's like much cheaper and the maintenance is much, much cheaper. The basic bus stop can't hold as many people, but it it's still, you should still use that. Oh, there's the hospital. Hospital is a very, is one of the most popular um, destinations in this time frame. So you definitely want to hit there. Maybe, so maybe we will delete that bus stop. So I know I got kind of distracted from the airport, but this will make it so that we have passengers that are actually going to use the airport. So there, I think that looks pretty good. Maybe we'll, while we're at it, we'll just bring it around over here. And one thing that I like to do with the buses is I like to make a bus uh, depot kind of. So it makes it so the buses will depart every, like I want, I want these buses to depart every 20 minutes, but you don't want them departing from a single stop at the end of the line, because that means that if a bus has passengers on it and there's another bus that is still waiting its turn to depart, the bus with passengers that arrived early will have to wait. So what I like to do is, Build a, build a little depot like this, like a cross, and then you there's this choose sign, and you make sure it is facing the direction that the buses are coming, and the bus will choose a stop that is open, or a slot that is open. And then, so I'll show you how that works. So, there's a variety of buses, you want to pick one that uh, suits your needs, like there's these, uh, what would you call them, like a coach? A coach bus where it has a high maximum speed, but not it can't hold as many people, and it takes the people a long time to load and unload. So, what we want to do is probably just use this bus, the Dennis Dart. It's very cheap. It has a short load time, and yeah, cheap and low main, uh, operating cost. So, I messed that up. Sorry. Okay. At the end, and then you want to hit mirror schedule. And then sometimes um, the schedule thing will pop up immediately. Sometimes you have to manually get it. But in this schedule thing, that's when you can set the wait time. So we want stop 18 to wait for a time, and we'll do 20 minutes. 
20 minutes is probably too much, is probably too often. I don't think it'll be utilized as much as I'd like it to. Because as I said, um, the timeline accurately depicts patterns of transport in society. And so in 2000, lots of people are using their personal cars. If you had built this bus line in the year like 1950 or 1940, then like you will have tons of passengers because not, of course, not many people own their own personal uh, cars back then. But so, okay, so there we go. So now we have a connection to the city. So let's go back to our airport with the hangar. Okay, there's our plane schedule here. You have to click the, the apron and then here. Okay, promote to line. Okay, all right, and it's all good. And remember, you have to have a apron, a air traffic control tower, and a uh, terminal building. So let's go up into our line manager. Okay, speed up the game. Where you can do, you can speed up the game by pressing the greater than sign on your keyboard. Okay, and our plane's off, and it's going 843 kilometers an hour. It's very fast. Okay, all right, it's got 46 passengers. Okay, I made this a little bit too fast. And see, so it has to wait. I think it has to load for the load time is about an hour. So that's one of the. Um, downfalls of this. Okay, and now, um, so we're already getting lots of passengers that are at this airport. Maybe what we should do is build a uh, little bus connection to our main terminal down here. So I already have like a short little bus system going on. Just follow the existing one, and then it'll have it'll have duplicate service. Okay. Let's make a. Let's make it so they wait for twenty minutes at the airport, and then we'll put a we'll make it like a little bus hub area, so they can wait there. six that line and you can see in the line manager you can if you click on the line you can see how full your vehicles are so it's good it's a nice way to keep track of what lines are being utilized the most which lines are maybe have too many vehicles on them okay so our air service seems to be starting off all right and you can see that we are we probably have too many vehicles here so let's Let's send this guy. Oops. Let's send this guy to the depot. We don't need him. Okay. So there, our air service has started off very nice. We're already making lots of money. Let's talk about the ferry service that I have, real quick. So the ferry service, the ferry service is connecting this city with this city or uh, this one's a better example, over here. So I'll, so if to use these ferries, um, they just have to be connected to the ocean, or and I, and I think they can also use large rivers. So at this port, I have a bus network connecting the city to the port. That's all you need, pretty much. And there's the ferry. And it's also being well used. 116 people on board right now. The ferries are pretty nice. Later in the game, they there are ferries that can go up to 70 miles an hour. And then I think there's even other ones that can go faster than maybe like 100 kilometers an hour. Um, and I think, yeah, those are like hydrofoils. So early in the game, of course, the boats are all very slow. So later in the game is when you get these fast, fast uh, ferries. 
And the ferries are quite an investment. You want to have a robust network in whatever towns, cities you're connecting. Because the ferries, that ferry that I'm using is this one, the INCAT 74 meter catamaran. And it costs $156,000, which is quite a big amount of money. When you start the game in this time period, you start with 400000 Oh, and look, there's also this other one over here. This is 235000 and it carries 1,500 passengers, which is a lot. Um, I don't think you would ever need that. Unfortunately, it'd be really cool to see this being utilized. Because at the point that you have such a large network later in the game that you need that kind of capacity, the game is probably going to be going kind of slow if you have it sped up. Um, but that is just, yeah. Like, I have an all, I have a decent computer. I think you should have, obviously, lots of RAM and a, CP, a nice CPU. But even then, like, it can still get kind of uh, slow and glitchy as you expand rapidly. Um, but I, I think I kind of covered everything I wanted to talk about. So thank you for watching, and hopefully see you guys in another video. Bye.